Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this time we have one of my favourite cars, which is a VW Golf GTI Mark III. Now, unfortunately, this one's had a bit of a hard life, but it doesn't mean we can't make it look fantastic, does it? So I'm starting off here with a snow foam and a general clean of the, uh, the seals and all the areas where the algae was uh, living. I foamed with built hamber auto foam as per usual. I think it's a brilliant product. Lots of cleaning power, but very gentle on the paint seal as well. So we could do this and I could go around the whole car with the detail brush and all the nooks and crannies, crevices. Uh, then I'm going to go back and do the seals again with some all-purpose cleaner. Again, that's Built Hamber Surfex HD. And then I'm going to clay it with a clay mitt. Uh, I use snow foam again as the lube when I'm uh, using a clay mitt. Now, there's a little clip a little further on where you see me doing it and you can hear the sound, the difference of going over the bit that I have clayed and then a the bit that I am claying and the difference in the amount of contamination that's there. So sit back and watch on. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, going around the car with Auto Smart Tardis for some tar removal, and then I follow it up with Built Hamburg Corosol for uh, the iron fallout. Didn't capture that scene as you see, it started to rain at that point. It's sunny again now, and that was only a couple of minutes later, can you believe it? Uh, so now I am going around and I'm clay mitting the car and I'm using the Auto Foam again as the lube. trim dressing now. I'm going around with Auto Finesse Revive. I ended up doing about eight 
coats on this because it was just soaking in, drinking it up. And then it rained the following day and washed the vast majority of it off. So what I would have done um, if I'd had more time and actually had the bits with me to do this would have been heating it up with the heat gun to try and return the uh, plastic back to its normal color, uh, possibly treating it with something like G-Technique C4 um, or uh, the various other products. Uh, Carl Pro Pearl may have given a good finish. It was pretty far gone, this plastic, so I think the heat gun would have given the best result and then followed up by the um, G-Technique C4. Here you can just see me. Uh, an example of what I did, I went over the whole car with uh, Autoglim Super Resin Polish uh, via machine and uh, then went around and sealed up with Optimum OptiSeal afterwards. So these pictures here just show the results after the um, SRP, the Super Resin Polish. Now, I wasn't perfectly happy with the results, so I went back and did some more. Right. We're back at this now. Um, I wasn't happy with the finish we got on the paint here. Uh, I gave it a good coat of super resin polish, auto glim, uh, but yeah, it's damaged paint, it's swelled, scratched, uh, quite a few deep scratches on here as well, some bird etching. So after running out of time the other day to get some more experiments, I've come back with this. This is a Hexlogic orange pad. This is their heavy polishing light cutting pad. Now. This is pretty thick, clear, but I'm worried it's failing in places. Well, I know it's failing in places. I'm worried about the general integrity of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with 205. That's a light finishing polish, but on a heavy pad. So this should hopefully knock back quite a bit. We'll see how it reacts with the clear. Where I can see it's flaking, the clear is actually very thick. Typical uh, Volkswagen from the uh, mid 90s really. So what I'm gonna do, give it a go with the 205 and we're gonna look at that here, see what the results are like. And if it clears it up sufficiently, we'll leave it there. If it looks like it could do with a bit more, might hit with some 105 as well. Okay, so let's give that a crack. All right then, this one's complete set done. Let's wait for the residues hazing up a bit here nicely. It's worked in, which is good. So, I'm going to remove it with a microfiber and see where we get to. Oh, wow, yeah, most of that bird etching has gone as well. A nice flake pop in there. Yeah, still some spider webbing around the sun, which you can see, which you'd expect. But come over here. That's just this SRP, that's just super resin polish. And that's Megs 205. That's a really good correction. Pretty happy with that. I'm gonna try over here, a bit of 105, uh, just for the sake of comparison. So let's see what we come up with. All right. And that's a set with uh, 105. Now I'm just gonna buff that back off. And see where we're at in comparison. An improvement for sure but not a massively big improvement over the 205, which is quite surprising. I guess these, the scratches that are left now are quite deep. Hasn't added any extra swirling though. You do. I'm gonna hit it again. Let's see what we can get with, with another set. This is the area done with 105. This is the area done with 205. Now the sun's gone in a bit, it's a bit harder to see on the camera. I can see here with the naked eye, 105 is not making a significant difference. So I'm gonna do the whole bonnet with 205, which is good, it's a much easier product to work. One last stage, LSP last stage product. In this case is wax 
and in this particular case, Colonnade A45. I love this stuff. Really easy to apply, in my opinion. Gives a wonderful colour, uh, good protection, but a lovely warm depth of colour, which I think something like this, lovely green paintwork, deserves. So, if you've never seen wax being applied before, used that applicator the other day, but look, there's hardly any wax on here. And this could be enough to do the entire bonnet. You definitely do the most of it. So, start in one corner, work your way around. Yeah.